Welcome to another fantastic episode of Paired Programmers. I'm Keith Ott, uh, one of the Paired Programmers, and today we're going to be talking about real-time communication using Socket.io. I'm not sure if you checked out our other video, not, come on man, what's up, check it out. But that one was talking about using SignalR, so if you're using the .NET environment, uh, that one walk you through how to do real-time communication uh, using uh, .NET, using SignalR, and also using an Angular app. Uh, this one is going to be talking about Socket.io, which you would use if your server environment is built on the Node environment. Uh, so if you're using Node.js to uh, actually host your web server, you'd want to use Socket.io to enable real-time communication. Um, and this one will also talk about using the exact same app. I'm also going to talk about it, uh, designing it with Angular here. Now, uh, the way it normally works, if you go ahead and uh, you know you're, you're doing, let's say, a ticketing system, which happens to be the example we'll be using here, uh, normally it'd be in a normal static environment. Okay, either you'd be polling the server for new data, or you'll be um, just maybe waiting for the user to refresh the page, and there's no way to get data um, easily to the client. Um, there's a lot of other technologies out there, such as um, using things like WebSockets, um, and there's other ways to get it working with older browsers. Uh, something like Socket.io does all that work for you. So it's really super simple to get data pushed to, the, to any or all of your clients, minimal work, um, and it will use, if the browser has available, it'll use things like um, using like WebSockets. If it doesn't, it'll fall back to older technologies too. So let's uh, start out with a little example uh, we have whipped up here. Well, first of all, I suppose I'll talk a little bit. Yeah, so Socket.io, check them out. Socket.io is their website. Um, you can see it's pretty easy to use here. And um, for the actual web server example I'll be going into, um, I am using Express.js. Um, actually, if you uh, check out the Socket.io, they have a lot of great documentation there. They're also going to talk about using Express for your web server. Simplifies a lot of things. Um, you can check them out, expressjs.com. So let's check out um, the actual uh, one here. So I have my uh, Node uh, server up and running already. Um, I have just a simple um, index file, which I'll show in a second here. Go ahead, whip this up. I have it listening on port 3000. So as we can see here, um, have some sample data. Go ahead, add my new ticket, uh, my description, hit submit, and as you can see, it adds it here. Now, the problem is though, let's open up another web browser here. So if we go ahead and put these side by side, if I go ahead and create a new ticket over here, Another new ticket. Submit. I can see it appears here, but it won't actually appear over here until I refresh. So we need to get this working in real time. The thought would be maybe your call center, you're looking at your screen, and you need to see in real time new tickets appearing right in front of you. So Let's, uh, without further ado, jump through a little bit of the code we have here. So this is on the node side of things. So we're setting up our initial uh, express, um, creating express here, creating the app, setting up. Um, I've done, because this app's already, um, already have it kind of um, scaffolded out um, using Bower, I've set up just a few mapping path things just so to simplify it. Um, the thought is, is that, um, you have a couple options. You could do, um, you know, maybe you are setting up, uh, serving your pages through a CDN or loading local or whatever, and then you also have a node server you're talking through. Uh, because I wanted to work around any sort of cross-site scripting things, I'm serving both my pages and the socket I/O stuff through the exact same server. Um, and I'm also making use of body parser. Um, and Oh, we can look that up here right now really quick here. Uh, so body parser, uh, it's built for Express. It allows, um, it makes it really super simple to go ahead and parse out um, the actual body of, um, see here, parses out. They walk you through all the stuff too. To actually go ahead and parse the data that's coming back from the server. Now, you should know there could potentially be some security concerns with this. Um, for the sake of this app, this is a fine solution, but if you're making an enterprise app, you might want to do a little digging into that too. 
Uh, so, and this also is not even connected to a database. We're just storing it in memory. I've got just some basic uh, tickets already here preloaded. And then I define my two different ones. I have an app.get. When you actually call make a call to tickets, it just simply sends all these tickets up here. And then in post, um, you can also post right to uh, tickets here. Um, if it doesn't have a body, it's going to go ahead and send an error back. Otherwise, right now, it's just pushing that data right on it. So I'm assuming you're specifying a title and a description. Of course, you could expand that, go further into, I want to make sure I've got, you know, validation or whatever you need to do for the sake of this it should be fine um, and then I'm also I'm going down here and doing a simple listen on port 3000 to actually spin it up now in the case of the actual angular app you have here um, I've <laughs> a little bit of debug code left uh, but it's pretty simple just your basic I'm including angular angular route resource um, and I've also got <coughs> excuse me um, application and also the uh, ticket uh, service we'll talk about in just a minute here. So the web pages themselves, pretty basic, just have some simple, hey, we're gonna throw some data on the screen here. Um, nothing really crazy, uh, both same, same thing with dashboard and with ticket. We're just throwing some data on the dashboard. Ticket is just taking some basic input, really nothing crazy there. Um, in the case of app, got a couple of controllers. And once again, if you're doing this as a real enterprise application, probably have the split out. Uh, but once again, for the sake of this, it should be good. Uh, dashboard controller. Uh, this is your home controller when you get to it. Uh, right now, we're just doing a tickets.query, which I'll get to this in just a second. And we're just attaching it to tickets. And then from there, we're just doing an ng repeat. So nothing crazy there. Um, within our create controller, we have a save function that goes ahead. It just calls save on our ticket service. And then it redirects you home and cancel simply redirects you home uh, simple route provider um, and just some other stuff <coughs> excuse me so in the case of our tickets uh, service um, it's pretty simple uh, we have defining resource we're talking to slash tickets here and in the case of save it simply calls server.save and query server.query it's all simple stuff uh, just look up ng resource if you have any questions on that so, <clears throat> so with that, let's go ahead and start plugging in Socket.io. Now, one thing to note with Socket.io is that there aren't any Angular wrappers for it. Uh, so we want to go ahead and create our own. You don't necessarily have to, but it's much cleaner to do it through a service. And the reason is that all about dependency injection and testability, that we can easily, when we're actually going ahead and creating tests, we could simply mock out our service. Then you don't have to worry about anything with server communication. Um, we'll take, you can mock that all out, do whatever testing you want to do. So uh, let's uh, start out here. So first of all, the thing you'd first want to do, I'm going to go into the root of my project here. And so let's go ahead and again install, save dead, socket.io. So I've already have it installed, um, but this is gonna go ahead, um, add Socket.io to your project, and it's also gonna then save it into your uh, node packages here. So the next thing um, that we'll want to do is, let's start um, on this side, for example. Since uh, Socket.io is actually gonna be served up uh, virtually from node I'm gonna go ahead and add script equals socket.io socket whoops dot io dot js and and the scripts there it's pretty simple there um, so now the next thing I'm gonna to want to do is to uh, go ahead and uh, create that angular service to actually wrap up uh, socket.io now and to quote Pablo Picasso great artist copy or good artist copy great artist steal um, actually, uh, Brian Ford has a great uh, uh, blog post about this. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just borrow his code here. I'll, I'll walk you through it, though. Uh, so let me jump over here, add it right down here. So uh, we're creating a factory. Um, I'm actually going to call it Socket.io. Um, I think it's a little bit clearer that way. Um, and the only thing we really require is going to be our root scope. So let's actually... Um, 
this up a little bit here. Cleaning everything. Uh, so uh, within here, we're going to call make a call to um, IO Connect. That's how you actually create your um, socket IO connection. Um, we're going to keep in a local variable called socket. Now there's two uh, pieces of functionality within um, socket IO that you really care about. Um, on, which is going to, uh, when you call socket, your when you do uh, io.connect, you'll do socket.on. This starts listening, and whenever a message comes in, um, if there's a, if it's listening for that particular message, it's going to go ahead and fire off whatever logic you have. And then there's also a MIT, which we won't actually get to in this tutorial, but a MIT allows you to say, I did something, all the other clients listen up. So that would be a way, for example, if you um, maybe are doing a chat application or something. Um, you can easily send it out to everybody without having to go through the server. Um, and within this, it's pretty basic here. Uh, we're simply listening for the event name, um, then, then with the on part, listening for the event name, and then the case when it actually happens, we're doing root scope dot apply. And then we're actually going to go ahead and call whatever function you want to run. And the benefit of doing this within an apply is that it'll take care of updating any references on your scope. Um, so if you have, you know, in our case, tickets, I'll go ahead, it'll update the view, do all the work for you. Um, same thing with emit. Um, it's going to go ahead and do whatever logic you want to do uh, within a root scope dot apply. So pretty simple there. So. Let's go ahead and within our dashboard controller, let's actually add, um, a, uh, we're gonna actually start listening now for whenever tickets are updated. So, first I'm gonna go ahead and add in socket IO, which apparently I've already done up there. Uh, so, let's jump down here. So I'm gonna do socket.io, so my factory, um, do on, and I'm listening for the ticket message in this case, and once again, do whatever you want, um, but we're going to have it on the when you actually make a call to Node to save it. Node is going to handle emitting out a ticket message to everyone who who wants to listen. So then, whatever our message comes in, and here, pretty simple. Scope it. Scope tickets. Push. I'm going to push on our message here. Now, once again, maybe you want to do a little more validation. Depends exactly what you're doing. In this case, uh, we can just pretty much trust what's coming back is okay. Um, so once again, nothing fancy, we're just adding it right to there. Pretty simple. So <coughs> uh, the next thing we're going to want to do is now uh, jump over to our uh, node server back here in index.js. We need to wire up this thing to start working. So let's go ahead here. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is add in socket.io to it. So, um, once again, pretty simple, require socket IO and our IO here. So, uh, the only thing we really care about here is in our posts. So when the ticket actually comes back and is saved to the server, um, we're already adding it onto here, whoops, uh, adding it onto our ticket one. And what we we'll want to do now is that IO emit. Um, and like I said, uh, we do actually use it on the node side of things. It's available in Angular if we wanted to use it there. But in this case, we're having the server um, handle talking to all clients here. So I'm going to give it a, say, for anything listening to ticket, quest.body. So whatever ended up coming in the server, I'm just going to send out to all the clients. Now, once again, probably would want to do some more validation. But for this example, we should be OK. Uh, now, in theory, everything should work. So let's uh, jump over to our server here. I'm going to go ahead and serve up our start up our node server here. So, oops, let's jump over here. Go ahead and refresh our server. So as we can see, we have all of our data here. So let's uh, split this across the screen here and. Let's also refresh over here. So now we have two separate browsers uh, actually running here. So I'm going to jump over here into Firefox. I'm going to add a new ticket. My awesome ticket. And my description. Hit submit. And as we can see, it immediately appears over here um, in our Conqueror window. 
and this goes both ways too. You can add some other data and they're both listening here at the same time. So where could you take this from here? So um, the next step you could do, because right now we're only listening when you're on the dashboard controller. And every time you come back to the dashboard controller, it requeries the server. So in theory, you could take it a step further where you um, only do an initial query. Uh, you could probably wrap that up and say, uh, your server here, do an initial query. And then you just set up uh, a listener that whenever new data comes in uh, from the server, you can go ahead, push a new one right onto your uh, tickets, um, right into your tickets. Uh, the other things you have to keep in mind, though, is that if a user goes offline, uh, maybe you know they're on a mobile device, their uh, cell service drops out, um, or they're on a laptop, maybe they put the laptop to sleep, they're gonna miss messages coming in. So you might wanna do something where if you detect a connection's been dropped, maybe you go ahead and just force a refresh, something like that. Um, but even with that, um, this is still quite functional and you can go ahead and, uh, and just go ahead and uh, re really it, you can expand it from here, whatever you need to do. Uh, so with that, uh, that pretty much wraps up this one. So uh, once again, uh, make sure you uh, subscribe. Uh, we've got a lot of other great content coming in the pipeline here, a lot of other great ideas, a lot of other great tutorials coming on. And make sure you follow us on Twitter. All the links for everything you need is below in the comments. Check it out, and thanks for watching.